Hey guys, in this video I want to give you a quick intro to Flexbox, and if you've never used Flexbox before, I want to kind of show you some of the cool things that it can do. I'm not going to go over everything with Flexbox, but I'm just going to go over some of the basics of why you might want to use it and how it can help you out. So I'm here on CodePen, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new pen, and then I'm just going to close the JavaScript right here, and I'm just going to use the HTML and the CSS panels. So I'm just going to create a blank HTML page and I will create a head and give it a title of Flexbox Intro. And then inside of my body, I will want to create a header tag. And I will just call this Flexbox Rocks because it does. And so you can see on my page here, we have this header. And let's say that we wanted to uh, center align the header. We want to center align it vertically and horizontally. Normally, this is kind of a pain point. So we would set the HTML and the body to a height of 100%. And I'm going to give the body a little bit of style here. I'll just say background, give it kind of like a nice dark background. And a color of white. Okay, and then we would, inside of our H1, we would say that we want text align to center. And then we would probably give it a margin top of, I don't know, let's say 200 pixels. And no, that doesn't quite work. Uh, 100 pixels maybe. Okay, that looks a little bit center. But now if we change the size of the page, you can see that it doesn't align correctly. It doesn't vertically align. And this is kind of a hassle. Normally you would have to set top to 50% and set a negative margin. But using Flexbox, we can do this very easily. So let me go ahead and remove all these styles from this H1 tag. And instead of using display block, we're going to use a new attribute, which is called display flex. And this gives us a few more CSS elements that we can now use, which include align items. And we could say center, and this will vertically align the header or any items inside of our body. We can then say justify content, and we could say center. And you can see that now it centers it on our page. So just like that, bam, we have something in the center of our page. We don't have to worry about margin top, uh, about the line height or anything like that. Using display flex and aligning our items, we can easily center align it vertically and horizontally. And one more thing that I want to show you is in align items, we can all use, also use flex dash end and it will put it at the very end or we can use flex dash start and it will put it at the very beginning. So that's just one basic example of how you can use Flexbox to vertically align any elements that you want on your page. And the next example that I want to show you is a unordered list, like a nav menu. Say that if you have a nav menu and you want it to be width of 100%, normally you would you know, do, do display inline block and do some float lefts. Let's go ahead and show you real quick. Okay, so we have our unordered list here and then we have a couple of list items. So let's say nav one and let's go ahead and duplicate this. So then we have nav two and nav three. So let's go ahead and remove this flex from the body and let's add some styles to our unordered list. So let's say margin and padding of zero pixels. Okay, and then we will also add some styles to our list element. So we want it to float left and we want to say display inline block, give it a padding and we'll give it a different background color too. So let's say background and let's also do a border right. Okay, so our nav is looking pretty nice here. And now we want this to span the full width of the page. So what we could do is, you know, since we have three, we could always do width of 33%, but we actually have some padding in there. So let's try width of 32%. And nope, let's see 31.5. Okay, there we go. Now we have it uh, width 100%. We could say text align center. And great, we have our navigation that's the full width of the page. But let's say then that we add another nav item. So nav four. And you can see that it breaks on our page because we have specified a specific width. So this is kind of a hassle because we just wanted a full width menu and it has to be so complicated with specifying the width. Instead, we can use Flexbox and we could easily have our navigation that flexes to any type of width. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So what I will want to do is remove this width and 
I will add in the unordered list, I'm going to add display flex because this is our container. And what I can do inside of our list element is I can say that I want this to flex a size of one. And you could think of one as kind of just a, a base, a starting off base. And I'll, I'll kind of elaborate more a little bit on that. But you can see now that our navigation is 100% and we don't have to worry about widths or anything. We can then add a fifth element if we would like. And after we add that, it will automatically be 100%, which is fantastic. We don't worry, have to worry about all these float lefts, which I could actually remove this display inline block and float left. And I'll probably want to give the unordered list a list style of none. Okay, so now you can see that the navigation is perfect on our page. We don't have to worry about all the float left and all the different size. So this flex one here, what it's basically saying is uh, it's a positive number that is specifying how each of the list items are supposed to, what size they're supposed to be. And since they're all one, they're all equal. But let's say that we have our list item first child and we want to do flex of two. You can see now that it takes up two of the space and all the other ones only take up one. As long as this is a positive number, you can look at it as uh, say 0 0.1, maybe we could say that that's 10%. And then we could say this is 0 0.2 and that one has 20% where all the other ones have 10%. Um, it's basically just looking at the positive number as a starting off point and then whatever the other elements are, it will flex to that size. So pretty much all you need to do is do flex one. And then if you want something else to be a different size, you could say flex two or flex three. But for now, we're just going to leave them all at flex one. And you can see that the navigation is exactly how we wanted it to be. So that's just a quick example of how you can use Flexbox to make your life easier. Um, I definitely would recommend once using Flexbox that you use a preprocessor because there are plenty of prefixes that you will need to use for different browser types, but just getting started with Flexbox will save you so much time in the future, and I would recommend that you look further into it, and we plan to have more videos to teach you about this awesome Flex attribute.